Hello and welcome to this Harvard style referencing tutorial. My name is Dr. Angeliki Papasava and within the next minutes I will try to put some light into the subject of referencing your sources correctly. The first thing you should do is to download the Harvard style guide from the university's repository. In order to do this, follow the steps of the following presentation. From the LLDE home screen in Blackboard, click on the Success Skills Resources link. Navigate to the How to Succeed tab. There, you can locate the Harvard Style Guide and download it. So, what is referencing after all and why should you do it? As members of the University of Roehampton, you are part of an academic community and as such, it is essential that you make yourself familiar with the conventions of academic writing. Every member of the academic community, staff and students alike is expected to follow these academic conventions in any piece of work they produce. In academic writing, referencing is one of these conventions. Referencing is used to acknowledge the use of other people's work and ideas in our own work. The term referencing includes the citation used within the text to show where a quotation or paraphrase statement is from, the inclusion of the full details of the source in the bibliography at the end of the essay. At university, you may find assignment writing is very different to your previous experiences of producing written work. In academic writing, we thoroughly research a topic before beginning the writing process and then begin to incorporate this research into our own thoughts, ideas and analysis, ultimately producing a thoroughly researched well-written and comprehensive piece of work. Referencing involves four key elements paraphrasing, quoting, citations, bibliographies or cited works lists. When you include the assignments, arguments, ideas or theories of anyone other than yourself in your assignment but put them into your own words, this is called paraphrasing. Paraphrasing can be used in a number of situations in your essays. You might be referring to a school of thought. You might be summarizing a chapter. You might be summarizing an idea. You might be summarizing a whole book. Any type of paraphrasing will need to acknowledge the source you originally obtained the information from. If you do not include an acknowledgement or this is incorrect, then this is plagiarism. This type of referencing you may be more familiar with. When you include the words of someone else's work in your essay, you're quoting. You must indicate that the words you're using are not your own. To do this, you will either use speech marks or single inverted commas around the words you're quoting. Whether you use speech marks or single inverted commas depends on the referencing style you're using. When quoting from sources within your text, use the following conventions. Keep quotations brief. If quoting short text word for word within a sentence, enclose the quotation in the appropriate quotation marks for your referencing style. If quoting a longer piece of text word to word, set out in a new paragraph with no quotation marks intended from the main text. It is very important that you do not forget to punctuate your sentences when you're quoting or paraphrasing. The simplest way to make sure you have punctuated your sentence correctly is to remember that the punctuation within the quotation does not count towards the punctuation of the sentence. The full stop must always be placed on the outside of the last bracket. Most courses in the university now require you to submit your work via Turnitin. Please note that Turnitin only recognizes quotations if they are in speech marks and not if they are in single inverted commas. Turnitin is also unable to recognize longer quotations that are intended from the rest of the text unless they are surrounded by speech marks. Therefore, you are reminded that it is important to check your Turnitin report thoroughly and make sure that all of your quotations are accurate using the recommended Harvard style. With each quotation or paraphrase that appears in your assignments, there must be some acknowledgement of where that information comes from. 
In academic writing, we call this acknowledgement a citation. The form of the citation will vary depending on the type of referencing style you're using. For the Harvard referencing style, we use an in-text citation, i.e. the citation appears within the sentences and paragraphs of your assignment. This citation is a brief summary of the source used, normally just mentioning the author's surname and or a date, page number, depending on the style you're using, surrounded by parentheses. The information in brackets is just a quick summary of which source you have used. A bibliography or cited works list provides full details of each source you have used in your essay in alphabetical order. The details you need to provide will vary depending on the type of sources you have used, but may include information such as the place of publication and publisher, the full web address, the original broadcast date, and the date the source was accessed. A bibliography is a list of all the sources you have looked at to help you compile the essay. This can include sources you have read but not actually quoted from or paraphrased in your work. Your bibliography or cited works reference list should be laid out as neatly as possible so it is easy for your tutor to find the full details of each source you are referring to. Choose a clear font in an easy-to-read size, so at least size 12. Space out each entry with a line in between each one and alphabetize the list from A to Z as much as possible. If an entry carries on to a second line, then this line should be indented from the rest of the text. Plagiarism is presenting another person's work as your own. When you include the arguments, ideas or theories of someone else, or use the words they have used and present them as your own argument, then this is plagiarism. Plagiarism in written work can occur intentionally, for example, when you copy a section from a book without referencing it, or unintentionally, from exa for example, when you paraphrase another person's work or ideas but fail to acknowledge them as a source. A lack of awareness of the rules of referencing is not an acceptable excuse for plagiarism, so please double-check all of your quotations and paraphrases and make sure every source is listed correctly in your bibliography. Please note that just changing one or two words somewhere in the quotation does not mean it becomes your own work and you do not need to referencing it. This is still a form of plagiarism. The university has a number of systems in place to find plagiarism in students' work, including software such as Turnitin, which detects how original your work is. If you plagiarize, you may face disciplinary proceedings, fail your module and even, at worst, be expelled from university. You should always ensure that you reference your work properly and carefully. Forms of plagiarism and collusion all of which are unacceptable, include using sentences, parts of sentences or larger pieces of text without attributing them. This includes cutting and pasting sections from websites. Citing the name of an author but not making clear which words are the authors and which are yours. Mixing and matching parts of sentences to create new ones. If you use recognizable phrases that are not your own, then you are plagiarizing. Using unattributed sentences with odd words changed. Quoting inaccurately. Even if you cite the author and source and put the quote in inverted com commas, if you do not reproduce a quote faithfully, then you have plagiarized. Paying to have a piece of work written by someone else. Writing a piece of work with another student, unless this is group work. Failing to list all sources used in your essay in your bibliography or cited works reference list. All websites visited, emails used, radio, television programs watched, as well as books and journals read, should be included. Submitting a piece of work written in a whole or in part by someone else or resubmitting part or whole assignment you have previously submitted. Even if this is your own work, the university considered this plagiarism as each piece of work you submit must be original. 
quoting very long passages unless the point being made is particularly complex and needs an extensive quotation. It's not exactly plagiarism, but it is poor practice. Harvard referencing is a citation style where the in-text citations contain a minimal amount of information about the source, mostly author's surname, date of publication and sometimes page number. The in-text citation is surrounded by parentheses, also known as rounded brackets. This can be embedded within a sentence or placed at the end of a sentence. The full details about the source are then placed at the end of the document in a bibliography or cited works reference list. Each entry is normally listed in alphabetical order. There is no universal Harvard referencing style. Harvard referencing is an adaptable style used by many universities across the world. Therefore, you can potentially access a number of different Harvard guides online. At the University of Roehampton, we recommend you to use the style in this guide only. Let's have a look at different forms of in-text citation. Quoting, paraphrasing. When you include the words of someone else's work in your essay, you are quoting. When you include the arguments, ideas or theories of anyone other than yourself in your assignment, but put them into your own words, this is called paraphrasing. Every time you quote from another person or refer to their work or ideas in your text, you must follow this with a brief citation in round brackets, which are called parentheses. The information in brackets can appear in different places within the text. For standard quoting and paraphrasing, the citation in brackets appears at the end of the quotation or paraphrase. If you quote a section of text that is more than 40 words long, the quotation should be indented either side with the, cita the citation in brackets underneath without quotation marks. This quotation should be presented using single line spacing and there is no need for inverted commas to indicate you are quoting when using a longer quotation. So, if you would like to cite the work of one author, these are the different ways that it can be done. The in-text citation usually takes the form of the author's surname, followed by a comma, and then the year the work you are referring to was published, then a colon and a page number. If you are citing two authors, the second author is listed by initials, first, then surname. For three or more authors in your in-text citation, you only need to list the first surname of the first author followed by the words at all. Remember, in your bibliography you must list every author. If referring to the whole book, cite the editor as the author. For multiple editors, use the rules as for multiple authors. If you are citing a chapter in an edited work or an article in a journal, it is the author of the chapter or article who would be cited, not the editor of the book or journal. If you are citing an article in a journal, it is the author of the article who would be cited, not the editor of the journal. When citing a source within a source in your bibliography references list, you should only cite the book that you have actually read, according to the rules for that type of source. You must include the date of the original source in your in-text citation. Films do not have an author in the usual sense, so the title may be used instead. However, if you are citing the work of a particular person, the director, performer, cinematographer, etc., you can cite them instead of the author and forget about page numbers. You would only quote from a film if you are directly quoting dialogue, in which case you would also need to quote the name of the character who is speaking. Web pages sometimes have a personal author, Look for clues such as the copyright sign or about this website or contact. More often, however, the author would be the organization responsible for the website. Web pages rarely have page numbers, so there is no need to include these. Now, let's look how to create bibliographies or reference lists. At the end of your essay, you must provide a detailed list of every source you have used in compiling your work. 
Each entry must contain full bibliographic details set out in the designated Harvard style. The Harvard Style Guide gives examples of Harvard bibliography entries for many different types of sources. Here we will examine some of them. For a detailed list, you should refer to your guides. In the in-text citation, the information in brackets is just a quick summary of which source you have used. In the Harvard system, all of the information about the source is included in a bibliography at the end of the piece of work. A bibliography is a list of all the sources you have looked at to help you compile the essay. This can include sources you have read but not actually quoted from or paraphrased. In However, the information included in the bibliography will vary with each different source, so please check this guide carefully for the information you should include. Your bibliography should be laid out as neatly as possible so it is easy for your tutor to find the full details of each source you are referring to. Choose a clear font in an easy-to-read size. Space out each entry with a line in between each one and alphabetize the list from A to Z as much as possible. If an entry carries on to a second line, then this line should be indented from the rest of the text. For books with one author, you should first list the surname, followed by initial, year of publication in parentheses, title of book in italics, place of publication, and publisher. In books with two authors, you should use an ampersand to link the two authors together. For books with three or more authors, follow the model for two authors, but list every author with a comma in between each one and an ampersand between the last two authors. If you would like to cite two or more books by the same author, as long as these are published in a different year, this is not an issue in Harvard referencing. In your bibliography, list each book by the same author in order of the date published with the earliest published book first. In this example, Hoskins is the author of the first work but the editor of the second. If the author authors have published more than one book in the same year and you are citing from them all, you can distinguish between each book with an A, B, C, etc in your quoting or paraphrasing. Then list the full details of the book in your bibliography with an A, B, C, etc. after the year published so that the books can be matched accordingly. In the case of different editions of the same book, cite sources as you would a book but include details of which edition you're looking at after the title and include details of the first edition only in brackets at the end. An edited work is usually a collection of essays or other short pieces of writing, such as short stories, plays, interviews, etc., written by different authors but compiled into one volume by the editor. These are one-off publications unlike which have an overall edition but are published very frequently and cited as journals. Edited works are cited in the same way as books but listing the editor as the author. When referencing dictionaries, cite the whole text as any other edited work. Cite individual entries in dictionaries and encyclopedias by the editor. For encyclopedias, only include the volume number if there are multiple volumes. When you want to reference a source that is cited within another source but you have not been able to read the original, then you must make this clear in your work. Be very careful with secondary referencing. Although in some cases this may be the most appropriate way of referencing this source, if it is possible, it is often more appropriate for you to look at the original source yourself so that you understand the source in context rather than another author's personal interpretation of the source. In your bibliography, you should only cite the book that you have actually read. So, for example, imagine you wanted to cite a quotation from Jones that you found in Dolowitz, Buckler and Sweeney's researching online. In your in-text citation, you would need to make it clear that you are not quoting from Jones's book. Then, in the bibliography, you would only reference the Dolowitz, Buckler and Sweeney book and not Jones. 
ebooks should be cited as any other book would be cited, so follow the rules in the books or chapter in edited books section to cite these sources correctly in your essay. Include at the end of the entry the details of the resource you have accessed this from and the date accessed. In printed journal articles, use the surname of the author, followed by initial, the year of publication in parentheses, the title of article in inverted commas, the title of journal in italics, the volume and part number in parentheses, and finally, the page numbers of the article. For online journal articles, please keep in mind that sometimes journal articles may be reproduced differently in different databases, for example, with different page numbers, so it is important to specify where you read the article. Follow the conventions of for citing and print article, but add the information about the database if it is relevant. When referencing printed newspaper and magazine articles, you should remember that the work you are referring to in your essay is the work of an author of the article. If the article has no author, use the name of the newspaper. For electronic newspaper and magazine articles, if the article has no author, use the name of the newspaper. When referencing websites, if there is no clear author of the website, use the corporate author instead. For example, you can use the organization behind the website. If there is no clear date of the website, after you have checked for a last updated date or a copyright date, then you can write no date. As I said earlier, this tutorial is not exhaustive, so for more information on how to cite and reference various sources, please refer to the Harvard Style Guide. Before ending this tutorial, I would like to share with you a tool that you can use in order to produce proper referencing. It is an online citation generator. It is free and it is called RefMe. The short presentation that follows shows you how to use it. Navigate to Google and perform a search on RefMe Citation Generator Harvard so that it directly opens the Harvard format. After you find it, you can perform a search. Let's search for a journal first. How about looking for something we already have in our Classroom Navigator? We'll do a search using the author's surname, date and part of the title. When you click Search, you will get a list of potential articles. Choose the right one, check the form and click Generate. Your reference is ready. Now, let's try with a book. Do the exact same procedure, but before you click on Search, choose Book instead of Journal. Your reference will be generated after clicking on Generate. Please keep in mind that there are many other free tools online that you can use for your Harvard style referencing. You can use Google Search in order to find the one that suits you the best. Thank you very much for taking the time to view this tutorial. I hope that you found it helpful and that it gave you an idea of what is expected from you when it comes to referencing. Goodbye!